Hi, I'm Miss Hearn. Let's get started. You will often be given several sets and and they have names that are the capital letters and then they'll they'll give you set these are called set operations union and intersections like how we have operations for numbers add subtract multiply divide for sets the operations are union and intersection and we know which two sets we're dealing with a and c so we choose those and what was this set operation here what's this one mean intersection right and when you see intersection, you think of what? Where they um, overlap, right? What they have in common. And we also associate that with the word and. Whatever is in both A and C is going to be in A intersect C. With that in mind, we're going to draw a picture of each of the original sets, set A and set C. We always list our boundary points. So set A has a boundary point of 3. We want everything greater than three or equal to it so we have a bracket and going to the right now when I draw C when I put in my boundary points now it's important to position them correctly with respect to three or otherwise it's going to throw off your answer so if, what I mean by that is is negative one to the left or to the right of three to the left so we're gonna put a negative one six on the other hand is to the right of three it doesn't really matter that it's proportionate but at least it's in the correct numerical order from left to right negative one three six X is where it's between negative one and six it's everything in between so we're gonna shade in between are we including the endpoints yes because of the or equal to so we're going to use square brackets to show we're including the endpoints we would use parentheses if we were not <laughs> we're going to find a intersect c by analyzing each segment that the boundary points divide this into what i mean by boundary points negative one three and six they divide this line into four pieces you need to kind of just check each piece so, for example, all the way to the left of negative 1, do we have numbers in both set A and C? No, in fact, neither, right? So that's definitely not going to be in our solution set. How about between negative 1 and 3? Do we have numbers in both A and C? No. There's numbers here between negative 1 and 3, but it has to be in both to be included in the final answer for the intersection, right? So we're not going to include those. Now, if you look between 3 and 6, do we have numbers in both set A and C? Yes, we do. There's an overlap there, 3 to 6. Okay, and then if we look past 6 to the right, there's only numbers in A, not in C. So that would mean what? Are we going to include it or not include it? Not include it. Now let's look at the boundary points, 3 and 6. Is 3 in both sets? Yes, it is. Is 6 in both sets? Yes, it is. So A intersects C written as a graph looks like this. How would we write that in interval notation? Bracket three comma six bracket, right? Basically you're copying that down. That's why I like to draw the picture because it translates so nicely into interval notation. How about set builder notation like we had at the top there? What would that look like? We'd have the set of all numbers x such that three is less than or equal to x, which is less than or equal to six. So that's A intersect C. Let's do A union C. It's easier to look at it when they're lined up very nicely together. And when your new graph, A union C, is right underneath as well, so I'm gonna line up my boundary values, negative one, three, and six. What's the rule for union? What does union mean? Together, all together, that's right. All together, we're uniting them into one big set. Anything that's in set A or set C has to be included in the union. All right, so again, we're gonna look at each piece. To the left of negative one, out here, we got nothing, right? So we have nothing to put in our union. How about between negative one and three. If there are numbers in either of the sets, we have to include them in the union. Are there numbers in either of the sets? Which set has numbers? C has numbers between negative one and three, so we have to include that. How about between three and six? Are there numbers in either of the sets? C and A, right? So yes, if it's in either A or C or both, we have to include it in the union. How about from six out to infinity? Are there numbers in either of the sets? Set A, so we're going to include it. Now, the only boundary value we haven't addressed, you don't have to worry about three and six, really. They got 
kind of include it all the way across there. But negative one, are we gonna include that? Yes, because it's in set C and anything that's in either set A or set C must be included. So this would be the graph solution to A union C. What would be the interval notation solution? Bracket negative one comma infinity, that's right. Now there are several ways we could represent this in set builder notation. In set builder, we still have the set of all numbers X such that now we want a characteristic of X. So I saw some people say, well, negative one is less than or equal to X, and that's fine. And other people wrote, well, X is greater than or equal to negative one. Those mean the same thing, don't they? So that would be, either way would be fine. I hope you found this video useful. If you did, please remember to like it.